Hello everyone, my name is Jacques Cohen and I have the incredible honor today to introduce to you a true pioneer in our field, Dr. Patrick Quinn, Professor Patrick Quinn. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh, you all know Pat Quinn, uh, there's some things you may not know, uh, depending on, on age and experience. And so, very quickly, I'll give you a short history um, of Pat and what he has done for our field. Um, and we will run in the millions, as you will see shortly. So, first of all, he's Australian, in case you wonder where the accent came from, okay? And I'm from Brooklyn, okay? So. <laughs> um, he worked with all these people and a lot more. So I, d I didn't want to bore you with everybody he has worked with, but these are very, some very important and talented people who've made, who've made changes to our field. On the top, he worked with Anne McLaren, Leslie Witten, David Whittingham, and his PhD supervisor was a man called Ray, or is a man called Ray Wales, who is now in his, well in his 80s and still active in Australia. Um, he is has two careers, two career spans, an Australian career and an American career. And the guys on the bottom have given me information on his Australian career, and all of them had in common that they said, and then in 1985, 86, he moved to America, and it's just an American story. So that part, uh, I, I, I don't have too many details on, but of course I was part of it. So. It's not, it's not that difficult. So you, the information comes, if in case you want to blame anybody, mostly from Ian Pike and Ray Wales and Matt McKee. Okay, Matt. That's where the information comes from. And of course, there's a lot of literature to go with it. So it's not, it's a very rich, a rich background. Uh, but those are the people you worked with. You had PhD students, Jim Stanger and Chris O'Neill were one, uh, were a couple of them. You had more. Um, these characters are well known to me and I think to many of you. Uh, they're still in Australia. Bronte Stone and Richard Masters was the group you worked with when you moved to the United States. This was in 1986. It was a massive, a massive event that occurred because a very important group in Australia was John Caron, Dr. John Caron, and Bronte Stone and Pat Quinn, they moved to the United States. Um, they joined uh, the group at uh, Cedar sinai in LA. I hope I got that right. And, um, uh, and Richard was there. Uh, so Richard and John became the medical directors, and Bronte and Pat uh, would run the lab. And, and at that at the time was the most influential group on the West Coast. So a little background here. Um, he, he has had three careers. Most people are happy to have one career. Some are very, very lucky to have two. Pat has had three careers, okay? The first one, he has had an academic career. Most of that officially took place in Australia, but he's always stayed an academician. He's always been interested in the human embryo physiology, human embryo development, how to improve things, how to, un to understand what goes on uh, during in vitro fertilization and embryo development. So he's always been academic, and still is. His second career is a clinical IVF career. He's run labs, he's set up labs, he's done consulting, still does consulting. Um, and, and so he's a clinical embryologist and a lab director. That's his second career, and his third career is that he is a product developer. And being here at the Cooper Surgical Booth, that's one of the more, more main reasons we're standing here because of the product development that he has done for not just Cooper, but companies before that, and also for his own group in the late 80s, early 90s, I think. Um, he was the first really to produce culture media commercially and removed an enormous headache from all of us, because we had to produce our own culture media, like we didn't have enough stress, okay? So you have to produce your own culture medium. For some reason, we believe the stuff only would last 10 days or 12 days. 
So every 10 days or so we made culture medium. We barely had any validation methods available to us in that short time span that we put the culture medium back in the lab. So thanks to Pat, he took a major headache away from, from, from us, uh, from, from people in the laboratory. Of course, others have followed very quickly. Uh, here he is with a two-cell embryo. Three major achievements. There have been many achievements um, in, in his career, but there are three that are, are sticking out and that are major. Human tubal fluid. The audacity to call it human tubal fluid is just amazing. It shows commercial talent. It's incredible. Never be criticized for it. Wonderful. Human tubal fluid. Why wouldn't you use it? That's what we want. We want the culture that embryos a human tubal fluid. So certainly <laughs> I did. <laughs> many, uh, many of us did. And it's been a constant um, uh, product. It's still in use today. Uh, about 12 companies that make it. It's wonderful. Anybody here who drank it? Have you ever drank human tubal fluid? Michael? Come on, you must have. I know you. you. You must have drank some human tubal Well, I did. You have drank, you drank, yeah, Kathy Miller did. It's, it tastes like sweet Mediterranean, okay? Human tuber fluid, since 1984. First paper, 84, and then the, a clinical paper, I think a year later. Um, he was the first to do the mouse MBO assay, okay? Uh, that's major, and that was years before anybody else started doing this. He was the first to point out in an 82 paper with... David Whittingham, I think, was on it, to point out that you could use this as a quality control tool and set it this way. He said, this is a quality control tool. And he said, but if you start with the two cell, it's not as sensitive as the first, first cell stage. This is something people don't know. It becomes inherent to a field. An o it's an open area where people don't know where things originate, but it comes from Patrick Quinn. And the other one was the first commercial medium, as I, as I mentioned, which, which really changed our lives as laboratory technicians. But did I, I think I went over this, so I have to slide twice. Okay, lifetime achievement. If you calculate it, HTF is still in use today. In some countries, it's about the only medium that's being used. And I know that I have these other two developments, uh, the, the sequential media and the caisson-based simplex optimization media. And yet, HDF stayed where it is because of its simplicity, its affordability, and because it didn't come with many fluctuations. And it went through some alterations, but they were rel relatively minor. Quinn's Advantage. Quinn's Advantage medium is one of those. Again, a fantastic name. Why wouldn't you use Quinn's Advantage? You know? right? That's, it's crazy not to use it. So calculate it. I calculated it. I think you're responsible for more than 2 million children. I don't think there's anybody who can say that. Uh, I'm sorry to put that burden on you, mate, but that's what it is. Two, more than 2 million children. Um, and it's not a, not a generous assessment. I think it's probably many more than that. Um, the only one who comes to mind is Chinggis Khan, but that's not a good, maybe that's not a good analogy. I should, I take it back, my apologies. Yeah. Okay, so here's that paper that we all know, um, the 1985 paper with John Karen and um, Graham Warns, Lou, Lou Warns, right? Yeah, Lou was his nickname, or is his nickname. Um, it, this paper is about eight pages long, has a bunch of tables in it, it's very detailed. So what, what Pat doesn't do, he doesn't beat around the bush. There is no unnecessary language there. It's very direct. That's how all his papers are. It's, it's, it's no nonsense. This paper could have been published in 10 parts, but it's only seven, eight pages with lots of table information. And it's really worth reading if you've never read it. It, it looks like it's now ancient history because of its type, typeface but it's, it's well worth looking at. And so the idea was of human tubal fluid to approximate the culture conditions as close as possible to those found in the natural environment of the gametes. These will most likely yield the best results. 
and, um, and that still holds today. This is the table. In those days, scientists would publish not only the ingredients, they would also say how much of each ingredient is in the medium. And people have gone away from this model very sadly. Uh, for, for good reasons probably, but it's not what Pat and others would do in those days. So it would give you the millimolar, 12 ingredients. At least three or four of those were kind of standardized. So we're looking about a very simple solution, but with major changes compared to the solutions that were available before that. Particularly in, in, in uh, potassium, there he drove a, a completely new trend as well as glucose. Uh, so, Because this is an example from a manufacturer as they publish HDF now, which is HDF is water. And that's why I ask you the question, did you drink it? Because it is water with some flavor attached to it. It won't hurt you. You can get bottles right now, right? You guys have bottles here. Um, and you can see every, all the ingredients are less than 1%. It's, it's kind of interesting. So just my last remarks. My, this comes from everybody I talk to and people who send me emails and information. Um, a summation of what they think about Pat. Um, Kind-hearted, incredibly funny, um, but in a dry sense, very Australian. Lover of learning, he really likes, he goes to as many lectures as he can in meetings like this. Um, and if you have him in the room, he asks the best questions. All right, until now, this, he, this is the man who asks the best questions. And he goes straight for it, and um, uh, um, direct and to the point, um, incredible thinker. He's a secret, secretly in displeasure, meaning that he will not show if he is not agreeing. Uh, he will not show it easily. He's very even mooded. And he's meticulous, adventurous, and a deep thinker. And with this, please give him an applause, right? Standing ovation. Not many people get a standing ovation. <laughs> Say a few words or you'll, or we'll have Bob Hi. say a few words first. Okay. Thanks, Jacques. Um, everybody, my name is Bob Auerbach. I'm president of Cooper Surgical, and, and I'm so happy to be here today with my friend Pat Quinn. Uh, I joined the company in 2005, and at that time, IVF was actually a fairly small part of Cooper Surgical. We were really an OBGYN company. And when I joined as a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist, that was the guy that kept me from looking stupid when I was starting to look at various new uh, applications for IVF. <laughs> well, I might say that Jacques, he sometimes didn't hide his displeasure when I announced some of my uh, thoughts processes, but he was truly my mentor. And in many respects, as you look around Cooper Surgical and we've built this incredible business, it really is in direct relation to the vision that Pat had. Unlike Jacques, I've never tasted human tubal fluid and Patrick has never pushed me into tasting tubal fluid. But what he did is encourage us as a company to seek the best, to ask the best, and to demand the best of our overall product portfolio. So it is with the deepest gratitude, Patrick, as a company of Cooper Surgical, we wish to thank you for all the contributions you've made to us as a company, to IVF as an industry, and as Jacques turned out and highly pointed out, to certainly north of two million patients. So congratulations, well earned, and best wishes, my friend. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. And as a small token of gratitude from the company, we wish to present you with this oh, thank gift. Thank you so much. Thanks, mate. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate everything that you have helped me to do in my life because it's only one day at a time. And having now 
realize that uh, I can still contribute, which I'm doing right now. And I really love the fact that my daughter, one of my daughters has helped me. That's Joanne Quinn. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> it's a real bitch getting old, I'm afraid. <laughs> what the hell? You've only got one day at a time. That's what I've got. Thank you very much for being here.